Hey everybody, in this video I'm going to show you how I built this amazing backyard chicken coop. This thing is awesome, it's got so many great features for being able to easily clean and maintain the coop, as well as gathering eggs in a way that even your young ones can do. The design for this coop was very much inspired by my friend Chris over at Third Coast Craftsman, so a huge shout out to him. My wife and I really love the overall look and thoughtful design that he put into it, and so we wanted to recreate that here in our own backyard. I did design my coop to be a bit smaller than that one because I've only got six chickens, and this one will hold six to eight birds comfortably. So let me show you how I built it. So to get started on this coop, I pretty much have one job, and that's to cut a pile of big 2x4s into a pile of smaller 2x4s. This is going to be a lot of cuts to make, but my miter saw station will make easy work of these 12 footers. Unlike most of my projects, there's no milling of rough lumber. I'm just cutting construction lumber to length and moving on, which is kind of nice for a change. Most everything in this build is standard 2x4s, but there's a few pressure treated ones in the mix wherever the coop is going to make contact with the ground. And after what seems like hours of chopping, all my parts are cut to length, and now I need to move this stack off my bench so I can actually build something. The first thing I'm going to focus on is framing out the walls and the roof of the coop. The roof is pretty straightforward, everything is 90 degree cuts and just needs to be assembled. I decided to join all these with a framing nailer because it's quicker and cheaper than using screws, but later in the build you'll see that I switched over to using screws. My reasoning for doing it that way is that if I ever want to get rid of this coop, I want to be able to easily disassemble it into its component parts like walls, roofs, etc. But those component parts won't need to be broken down because they're all fairly small, so I could just use nails on those. Assembling the walls of the coop are pretty easy too, but the design has a slanted roof, so I need to cut that angle into the top of all the studs. I asked the internet, what's a good angle for a chicken coop roof, and I got everything from about 5 degrees to 18 and a half degrees. After designing it out, I went with 15 degrees because it looks pretty good on my coop and the angle is easy to remember. I think if you made a bigger coop than this one, 10 degrees might be a better angle, but for my little coop, I think it looks nice. I am going to be putting a big access door on one side of the coop for cleaning and maintenance so the studs don't go all the way to the ground except for the one in front which I doubled up for added strength. But the angle cuts at the top and the stud spacing are all the same as the other side. The front wall continues with the angles across the top and I also wanted to add a couple small shed windows so I framed those in too. The header board does have a 15 degree angle cut on one edge so that it lines up flush with the angled studs and the bottom is pretty open because that's where the chickens are going to access the nesting boxes. Compared to all the cutting I did, assembling these walls went pretty quick and pre-assembling these on the bench made it easy to keep everything square. But for the next part of the build, I need to shift over to my garage because the walls of the run are 10 feet long and I just don't have that much open floor space in the shop. The bottom plate of these walls are made from pressure treated lumber because they're going to be in contact with the ground and the run will have a slanted roof but only half the angle of the coop roof because it's much longer. It's about 8 feet tall at the front of the run and slopes down towards the back. I'm 6 foot 2 and I'll be able to stand comfortably at the back of the run without bumping my head which is really all I ask for in life. For the door to the run I wanted to add some fancy crisscross bracing with a half lap joint in the middle. Sounds like something you may not want to do because, well, geometry, but it's actually pretty easy to do and you don't need any math. I can just lay the boards inside the door frame and mark where they intersect. I then just line up my miter saw exactly to that line and set my depth of cut exactly halfway through the board. Then I can just begin feeding it through the blade like I was back working in the deli department. I sneak up on the final fit and bam, I have an X with no math needed and it drops right back into the door because that's where I took the original measurements from. Moving on to the base of the coop, I'm going to use 4x4 posts as the main supports and those get the same 15 degree angle on top. Each 12 foot 4x4 will give me a tall post for the back and a short post for the front. Each front and back post will be connected together by two main horizontal supports. To make those, I'm going to gang together a couple of 2x4s. I plan on putting sand in the bottom of the coop a couple inches deep, which is going to be fairly heavy and I don't want the floor of the coop to sag over time. To attach these to the posts, I opted for pocket screws because I felt like this was going to be the easiest way to get a solid connection to the posts. I put pockets on both the inside and outside for added strength. Now to join the two sides together, it was back to the garage. I decided to attach a couple of temporary feet just to use as helping hands while I attach the other side of the base. 
This made the process so easy. You can see my reference line there on the side of the post. The height was just right and all I had to do was drive my screws and then remove the temporary support. And then it was time for a surprise inspection by one of the future occupants, just making sure the project is still on schedule. I added two more supports in the middle and held those in place with a little scrap of wood and now all I need is a floor. So I made the base of the coop exactly four feet deep by six feet long. That way I can use a single sheet of OSB with only a couple of feet cut off one end. The other reason I went with this size is that it's recommended to give each chicken three to five square feet of coop space to live and since I have six of them, this is gonna give each one about four square feet each. I marked out notches in all four corners and then cut those out just using a jigsaw with a speed square as my guide for a straight cut. This method is so quick and easy that I often use it when I'm cutting out toe kicks on cabinet builds. The floor just drops right into place without too much persuasion and gets screwed down to the frame with inch and a half screws and that's it for the base. The next day I get a few helping hands to carry the base of the coop to the least slopey part of my yard. This was a real challenge for us because I live on the side of a hill, but in the spot that we chose I was able to get it really close by temporarily propping it up with a couple of well-placed 2x4s. Then we could begin adding the walls of the coop. And this is where prefabbing them in the shop was clutch because all I have to do now is drop them in and screw them into place. On the side where the access door goes, there is no base plate, so I just toenail the front stud to the floor. For the walls of the run, we referenced off the 2x4s at the bottom so that the bottom of the run was flush with the bottom of the coop. And that's a lot of bottoms. This will keep the run and the coop in the same plane so that when we do final leveling, we can get the whole thing at once. We also did the same thing with the back of the run as well. Before adding any more walls, we decided to swap out our 2x4s for some more permanent support in the form of concrete pavers, which you can kind of see in this super out of focus shot. Then we could add the final two walls to tie everything together, making the structure nice and rigid. The last little bit of framing left to be done is adding the nesting box, and I left the last 12 inches of the coop just for this. The ideal size for each nesting space is 12 to 14 inches wide, which gives me room for four good sized spaces in here, which should be plenty for six birds. I'm told the birds are gonna end up picking just a couple of spaces as their favorite and always use those. Hey, this thing is really starting to look like a coop. For the outside of the coop, I'm using T111 siding panels. T111 is a kind of pine plywood that looks like shiplap on one side of it. It comes in standard four by eight sheets and is half an inch thick. So I can just cut all my panels to size using my track saw in the shop, which is super handy, and then screw them right to the framework of the coop. The panels aren't very big, but to help out, I screwed a scrap of two by four to the base of the coop to act like a ledge to hold the panels in place while I attach them. The coop was already pretty sturdy, but now with all these panels screwed to it, it's rock solid. I was able to get the coop covered up pretty easily, and yes, I did cover over my window frames, which will be easier to cut out later than to cut around now. This T111 is going to give the coop a real rustic feel and look great when it's painted. That's foreshadowing. Oh, and randomly I noticed that I hadn't added any sides to the nesting box, so I went ahead and screwed some of the OSB to the vertical supports to wall each space off. To make the siding match the angles of the walls, I opted to cut them with a flush trim bit on my router. This was so quick and easy, but man was it messy. I feel like I was in a blizzard of sawdust. Then I painted the coop, which I decided not to bore you with. But if anyone's curious, I used Emerald Exterior House Paint from Sherwin-Williams. They're not a sponsor, I just use their products all the time. Then it was time to knock out these windows. This is super easy to do. From the inside of the coop, I drilled out four pilot holes at each corner of the window framing. This gives me entry and exit points and I can connect the dots with a straight edge. Then I just drop in my jigsaw and cut to the lines. Easy peasy. Note to self though, staring this close at a fresh white surface in direct sunlight is killer on the eyes, almost like snow blindness. So maybe the next time I cut out windows, I do it before I paint. The windows fit nicely in the openings and screwed right to the framing. You know, they say that the eyes are the windows of the soul. But I also think the windows are the eyes of the chicken coop.
Also, the front of this coupe looks exactly like a cartoon character that I know, and it's killing me that I can't remember where from. If you know who I'm talking about, please drop it down in the comments below. Help a brother out. Okay, I need to make another hole in the back for the chicken door. I'm using an automagic door that opens and closes based on light levels or whatever schedule I set because, you know, everything these days needs a smartphone app. The one I purchased is made by Run Chicken, and I chose it because it looks really simple to install and operate. To cut the hole, I used the same technique as the windows, but because I did it from the outside, I screwed up the hole locations and hit the 2x4 at the bottom. Whoops! Easy enough to fix, and the door just screws to the wall like this. And now I can test it out. This app will allow you to set the door to open or close based on set hours or at sunrise or sunset based on your location or based on the light sensors on the door, which will open 20 minutes after sunrise is detected and close 20 minutes after dusk. I love technology. The next thing to do here is to add some trim to tidy everything up. I'm just using 1x4 and 1x3 pine boards here and these are tacked on with a trim nailer. These were all primed and painted with the same exterior house paint ahead of the installation, but I did go back and touch up any bare spots on the exposed ends or caused by nail holes. I also added the door to the nesting box, which is just made out of T111 framed with 1x3 boards. I like this door because it swings down for easy access and cleanup, and it stays closed using eye hooks on each side. The side access door was made the exact same way, but I'll add barrel locks later to the top and bottom to keep it secure. Then I added the final bit of trim around the windows to finish off the look. Then I added one of the smartest features to the inside of the coupe. Chris over at Third Coast Craftsman built an angled roost in his coupe and also a droppings board to go underneath the roosts. This makes it super easy to clean the coupe because it opens up the area right in front of the access door and I can scrape any droppings from the droppings board into a five gallon bucket to be used later as fertilizer. And as you can see, a person can still fit inside the coop if need be for deeper cleaning or repairs. I'm also making a two level roost over the droppings board, which is gonna give my birds plenty of space and also get them plenty of air circulation from the windows. For the roof of the coop, I decided to go with metal instead of shingles. Compared to shingles, a metal roof is much lighter and stronger and also quicker to install because you don't need plywood underlayment, you can just screw it straight to the frame. And because it's so light, it's easy for two people to lift into place. Before I installed the roof over the run, I went ahead and covered everything in hardware cloth, which is much easier to deal with now. Actually, if I build another coop, I would go ahead and install the hardware cloth as I assemble the wall while everything is flat on the ground. If you've never used hardware cloth, it's like a stronger version of chicken wire. It comes in big rolls and it's a bear to deal with by yourself, but it's more secure than chicken wire, which is the most important reason to use it. I started out snipping this stuff to length by hand, but that got old really fast. Then I got smart and switched over to a rotary tool with a metal cutting wheel and that's much better. After that, I installed the door to the run, which I attached with gate hinge hardware and a spring-loaded latch to make sure that the gate remains securely closed. Then we can slide the roof onto the run, which again is so much easier to do with metal roofing. And after attaching the roof with screws, that's it. The coop is complete. All it needs now is some new occupants. I do have a little work left to do to make this coop as safe as possible and also to beautify it. One thing I'm gonna do is extend the hardware cloth out about a foot around the perimeter of the coop, and that's just to help discourage animals from digging underneath. And on top of that, I'm gonna add some large landscaping rocks, as well as some small shrubs that can really root down and discourage animals from digging underneath also. And I'm gonna go back and add some hardware cloth to the windows just so that we can open those up, let the chickens have some ventilation, and not have to worry about predators climbing in through there. So I hope you guys really enjoyed this video and you learned something new. And until next time, have fun in the shop.